Hi guys, thanks for checking out this video. So I've got something really, really interesting that I discovered in Universe Sandbox 2 here. What I'm doing with my mouse is using the water dispenser to create what we can think of as simulated light wave fronts. So these are wave fronts you can think of as light and they're moving towards, uh, it looks like the sun, but we're gonna think of it as more of a gravitational lens because these wave fronts will be bent by the gravitational field. Just watch what happens here after they encounter the lens. It looks like they get all scrambled around. But can you see that the light wave fronts were actually reconstructed as they exited the gravitational field or the lens. That is really, really, really fascinating stuff. And it's, it's actually how lenses work. In this particular case, uh, the bending is quite sharp and so the waves are being bent back on themselves. But don't worry too much about the, the amount of bending going on, just the fact that the light waves are being deconstructed in the lens and then reconstructed when they exit. So the information carried in the original light waves, it looks like I'm sending a Wi-Fi signal to the sun, that's pretty funny. Uh, but the, the, the light waves are, are being distorted by the lens, but then reconstructed on, the, on, on their way out. And it's really cool that I found this. Actually, stick around to the end of the video because I've got something really, really cool that I want to show you guys. Because this is only, you know, like a representation we're gonna, I'm going to draw an actual image and, and send it through the lens and we'll see what happens. And take note here because the left and the right sides are getting reversed. That's the next thing you should notice aside from the reconstruction, which you can see quite clearly here. But down the bottom there, you can see the left and the right sides have been switched. And so if you could actually see the image that these supposed light waves would were to create, you would see that the image would be flipped upside down. And if you've ever held a lens up and looked through it at arm's length, you'll notice the image is actually upside down, and this is why. This is such a good representation of real physics that we can actually use gravity as a lens here, which happens out in space. You should check out the first video of this series to see a really good example uh, from Hubble and in this software of what gravitational lensing looks like uh, out there in nature. But we can see quite clearly the waves being you know, reconstructed there and that's, that's quite fascinating. So I'll just talk a little bit about, I'll just describe quickly what's really going on here. So the light waves are moving towards the lens we're calling it, the gravitational lens and they have this a certain amount of information that describes those light waves. You know, like for example, it could be an image of a person or, or what have you. Uh, and, and by having just you know, simple wave fronts, we can see that the information is quite simple uh, and it's not some big jumble of things. And so this is obviously a simplified view, but the physics is exactly, is exactly correct. So the light waves are moving into the gravitational field and as they move into the gravitational field, they get distorted, they get all mixed up. But the, 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 the thing to keep in mind is that the light waves need to move out of the gravitational field as well. And the really cool, fascinating part here is that as the light waves move out of the gravitational field, the same field that scrambled them de-scrambles them and reconstructs them. So the information about all of the particles is actually carried through the whole system. And in this case, we've got a black hole here and we can see that that big curve there, or that, that big uh, light wave front, sort of, so to speak, uh, is actually the, you can see the light waves move, or the light being, you know, rotating around the common center here. That's what that represents. So light coming over from the top of the plane of our solar system here is being imaged at the bottom of the black hole and vice versa. And so here I'm actually going to create uh, a representation of a full 3D image or it's a representation of a 2D image, but in 3D space, and it's a pentagram. Why a pentagram? Uh, it's not because I hail Satan, it's because uh, a pentagram is the shape that a um, that Venus makes in the sky during the year, which I think is where it came from. Come from. I think the pagans were uh, made out to be devils spawned by a Christian, a Christian folklore or something. I don't really know, I'm not, I was told that. Anyhow, look at that. So the, the star in the middle scramble the light waves up 
I'll scramble the image and then look, it's magnifying. So as the as the the image moves into the gravitational field, you saw it get all scrambled up. And as it moves out of the gravitational field, it gets reconstructed. So the information is still intact. And I think that is really a fascinating idea. And uh, in ray tracing diagrams and stuff at uni and when you're doing it in physics, you know, it doesn't look anywhere near as beautiful and as cool as this. Uh, so I just had to show you this. I just thought it was that awesome. I'm really quite stoked that I, that I, that I discovered this. You can see it's a, it's, a, it's a full 3D image being constructed. And the same type of an idea, as I, I'll draw another star here, the same type of idea is how a hologram works. If you've ever, if you've ever bought those packets of chips, and actually you can see that the information about it being a pentagram only makes sense from this perspective. So we see again the, the star's gravitational field acts as a lens, warps everything around and then reconstructs the image as the image moves out of the gravitational field, moves out of the lens. The same effect exactly happens with glass lenses. Obviously this is being you know spun around and moving back out in the direction that it came. That's quite a dramatic effect in, in nature. With a glass lens you don't see that type of an effect. So don't worry too much about the degree of warping. In fact it probably points out more so that no matter how much bending and distorting goes on, a physical system deconstructs and reconstructs an image in a bigger or a smaller version, in this case it's a much bigger version, uh, is a lens. And this is, this is exactly what we mean when we say gravitational, gravitational lens. But the, the, the 3D hologram thing that you get in the chip packets, like I was saying before, is, is where you get a, a piece of plastic. And what they do is they, they put grating in it, which is just like little ridges uh, on the plastic and it's clear plastic and they'll actually take a photo of an object through that piece of ridged plastic and as the light waves you know come from the light they bounce off the object and then they move through that piece of ridged plastic they get scrambled up and what they'll actually do is take an image of that scrambled up light and then print that out onto a little piece of card and so you just get this blurry fuzzy you know really distorted awful looking image but the magical, in inverted commas, part here, the really awesome part is that when you put that grating back over the top of that blurry image on the, printed on the card, the cardboard reconstructs the light waves in the same way that it deconstructed them exactly. And so you end up getting this three-dimensional image through the grating. And that's exactly the same as what's going on here. You're getting a distortion of the image and then it being reconstructed as it moves back through, backwards through the same system that distorted it. And so the 3D, no matter how complex the information, it just gets reconstructed. And it's, it's really quite awesome because you can get some really complicated wave fronts of light moving you know, through space. And if you want to try and make a 3D image, well, you can literally use this little trick of using a grating to create what looks like depth in the in the image it creates the perfect 3d rendered sort of image really quite cool really quite cool anyway thanks for checking out the video and uh i'll catch you guys next time